Hi, and welcome to another episode of Poltex Tech Lightning. Are you excited to hear about five services in Azure which you did not know existed? How many of these services do you know about it? Let's jump right into it and get started. Here we go. First up in our list is a service called Azure Bare Metal Infrastructure. The standard Azure compute services, such as virtual machines, are sufficient for most workloads. Virtualization of machines indicates that there is some kind of host, also referred to as a server, running multiple virtual machine instances. You, as a customer, you don't actually have access to the host itself, but only the virtual machines running on them. The Azure Bare Metal servers are not virtualized servers and come with their own stack of computing, networking, and storage. You, as a customer, get an isolated bare metal instance from Microsoft. So why would you actually use this? Well, there are specific type of workload which haven't been designed to run on typical virtualized instances. Examples of this have to come to mind, such as SAP HANA and Nutanix Cloud Clusters, NC2, which is actually a hybrid cloud solution to manage application and infrastructure on both private and public cloud, for example, Azure. What are the downsides of this service? Well, there are actually not that many use cases for this service. I mentioned SAP HANA, but it seems lately that even they are more focused on providing virtual machines with enough capacity instead of running them on a bare metal server in the cloud. Primary use case for this at this point is actually the Nutanix cloud clusters that I mentioned. That's the software stack to manage your applications and infrastructure in both the private and public cloud. So let's look at the pricing. Like all cloud services, it depends on what you use. Now, looking at the Nutanix cloud clusters, it's about $5,000 an hour for a node with 36 cores and 576 gigabytes of memory. So I would definitely say that this is actually quite pricey, this service. Now, before we move on to the next one, you may say, wait a minute, isn't there a service called Azure Dedicated Host? And is this the same service as Azure Bare, Bare Metal? So yes and no. There is a service called Azure Dedicated Hosts, which have things in common with Azure Bare Metal, but there's one big difference. Azure Dedicated Hosts are dedicated physical servers where you actually put virtual old machines on them. So you actually run your vir workload on virtual machines. So, and that is completely opposed to what Azure Bare Metal is. Number two, next service on the agenda is out of this world, namely called Azure Orbital. This is a service that helps satellite operators communicate with their satellite. Imagine that you have your satellite orbiting the Earth, collecting data like weather information or images of our beautiful planet. To get this data, you need to communicate with the satellite using ground stations that are located on Earth. Now, Azure Orbital, they provide a network of these ground stations, allowing you to send commands to your satellite and receive data from it. The best part is that all of this is managed through the cloud, so you don't need to build and maintain your own ground stations. Now, this service is especially useful, of course, for companies and organizations that rely on all this satellite data for their operations. Now, for example, it can be used in agriculture to monitor crop health, in disaster response to assess damages, or in telecommunications to provide internet connectivity in very remote areas. Azure Orbital makes it easier and more cost-effective to manage satellite communications and process the data they collect. Now, you of course have to ask about the pricing. You pay for the amount of times that you have to contact a satellite in how many minutes each contact lasts. So if you say, for example, if you contact a satellite 30 times, each with a five minute communication time, this will cost about 1400 euros. Now, we are done staring up into space and moving on to number three. This service is called Azure App Spaces. While it's technically still in preview, I expect it to hit GA in the near future. Now, it can be deb debated if this really is a service, since what it's doing is actually aggregating as existing Azure services, such as container apps 
and static web apps into an easily deployed solution. However, I will stick with the terminology that is written in the Microsoft documentation, and there it refers to this as a service. So, how does Azure App Spaces work then? Well, first of all, let's assume your code is stored in a GitHub repository. What you do then is you link App Spaces to your GitHub, and during this linking process, you select the details such as uh, which service plan to use, along with the subscription where the app resources should be deployed in. Now, the service is intelligent enough to decide which services to use within Azure for this specific application. So just based on your code, it will then deploy all the resources required to run the application using AI. You may, for example, end up with a static web app based on your code, a log analytics workspace, and an application insights, which are all automatically created. All in all, this service is mostly optimized for deployment of simple three-tier applications. Three-tier being re referred to as an application architecture, having a front-end, database, and a back-end. So what is the drawback of this here? Well, like I said, it's uh, for simple end-tier application deployment. It's not going to include integration if you have some custom or special authentication mechanisms that is in use by the application. The pricing today is officially not known. Going to Microsoft documentation, I will quote and read this. App Spaces offers simplified and consistent pricing plans for various scenarios, so you don't have to worry about accidental charges. So that statement is from Microsoft documentation, and I'm sure it means as much as to you as it does to me. So I think we just have to wait for the official pricing. Coming up next is the number four is a service called Azure Signal R. Azure Signal R simplifies the process of adding real-time web functionality to applications over HTTP. This real-time functionality allows the service to push content updates to connected clients, such as single web page, or mobile applications. As a result, clients are actually updated without the need of having to pull the server or submit new HTTP requests for updates. It can be used for any scenario which requires data from a service to be pushed to a client in real time. A few examples of where this service can be used include if you have, for example, high frequency data updates such as online gaming, voting and auctions. For examples, also for chats, which includes live chat rooms, whether it is from humans or these days AI bots. There can be very useful. The third example is, for example, real-time map location, where you will track your Amazon package in real time, or maybe more appropriate for this video, if you're tracking a package which you ordered from the Microsoft Store. Now, these were just three quick examples, but as you can imagine, there's a plethora of more use cases for this service. So how to use Azure Signal R? Well, you actually need to incorporate the Signal R SDK into your application. So in other words, you need to modify your application in order to use Signal R. The pricing of this is like all cloud services, you pay for what you use. They have three SKUs for this. You have the free, standard and premium. With the standard SKU of one unit with 31 million messages, you pay around $40 a month on that. We are now going to number five, which, despite being in preview today, I think this will be a major service by Microsoft. I'm talking here about extended zones in Azure. Microsoft, they have a slew of different services bringing Azure closer to the end user such as Azure Edge Zones and Azure Public Multi-Access Edge Compute. Now they're working on something called Extended Zones. Now this is a very small footprint of Azure placed in a specific location, such as Los Angeles. It's meant to bring many, but not all, of the Azure feature closer to the user, where you improve latency and in case there's a special jurisdiction in place for data location. In practice, Let's look at a storage account that's deployed in the extended zone of Los Angeles. That means that the data plane, remember data planes are actually where the files are stored in the storage account, will be located solely in this city. However, the control plane of the storage account still remains in the specified region. Now, if you recall the control plane, it actually doesn't contain the files of the storage account. 
The control plane, that's where you configure the storage account by, for example, set setting SKUs and other settings related to the storage account infrastructure port. You cannot access the actual files of a storage account just by using the control plane. That's only possible through the data plane, which is, of course, located in the extended zone. So, as you can imagine, this can then be used by healthcare or other institutions where localized data is absolutely necessary. At the time of this recording, there is no charge for using this extended service, but of course it's only available in Los Angeles for now. But it gives a glimpse into what is to come in the future, as the need for localized data will not go away. There you have it, folks. Did you know any of these five services? I would love to hear from you. Put a comment in the video which service and specific use case that you have seen of those in the wild. So that's all I had for today. Until next time, take care. See you.